Embryo lets you easily write your own nodes, giving you the full power of coding in an easy-to-use visual wrapper. You can create your own node definition on any of the node toolbars. Nodes added to the Project tab, which is a tab with the Embryo icon, are saved to your project and are not available to other projects. Nodes added on the other tabs are saved at the application level and are available to other projects. For this example, I will add the node definition to the project. So first, select the Project Nodes toolbar, then right-click and select New Node Definition. Drag the node definition onto a node screen to create an instance of it, then open it for editing by clicking on the Open icon in the top right of the node. First, rename the node definition by right-clicking on the title and selecting Rename. I'll rename the node to My Node. The Add Input and Add Output button rows let you add inputs and outputs. Hover over a button to see the input type. For this example, I will add an input activation, an output activation, and an output trigger. There are a few other buttons and options on the top of the node editor to know about. The Save button saves and recompiles the node in the UI. This compiles the node as c -sharp code. If you are making an Arduino node, you will want to connect or upload to the Arduino after writing your node to make sure it works on the Arduino. Next to the Save button is a toggle to edit the default input values. By default, this button is not selected, so changing the inputs affects only the instance of the node you are editing. Click this button to highlight it in red, and then changes to the inputs will be used as defaults when creating an instance of the node. I will turn this on, then change the input activation to 1, then create another instance of the node to confirm that the default value is now set at 1. I'll delete this extra instance and turn off this toggle button. For an Arduino project, if the node is going to interact with the hardware by reading from or writing to a pin, you must select a Touches Physical Pin checkbox. When selected, you will write only Arduino code in this node. This node will never run in the Embryo UI as C-sharp code. It will have to be uploaded to an Arduino in connection mode to use it. If Touches Physical Pin is not checked on an Arduino project, you can either use the same code for running in C-sharp and on the Arduino, or you can write different code for each language. Press the button with the two red arrows to hide the Languages tab. In this mode, the code you write will be used for both c -sharp and Arduino, so obviously this code must be valid for both. The Timer node on the Flow Control toolbar is an example of a node that implements both c -sharp and Arduino code because the two systems handle timing differently. Most custom nodes should use the same code, which I will do here. I will come back to the I.O. Set checkbox later. The drop-down above the code editor lets you pick which update condition to write code for. Declarations is where you write variables and functions that can be accessed from any update condition on the node. Note that variables and functions here are only available to this node, not other nodes in the project. The startup event fires once the program starts. On an Arduino, this is when the Arduino is powered on. The every update event fires on every update of the node. Look at the bottom right of the node screen for a refresh rate. A node will fire at the refresh rate of the agent that it is on. So for this instance of this node, the code in the update condition will fire 32 times per second. Finally is the shutdown event. This could be useful for PC projects to clear up any used resources or close any connections. It fires when the program stops running. On an Arduino, the program stops running when the Arduino is powered off, so this event doesn't fire, and this node isn't very useful on an Arduino project. For most nodes, you only want code to fire when an input value changes. To set up a new on change event, click on the plus sign next to the dropdown. When an on change event is selected, a checkbox is shown next to all inputs. Check the box next to any input that should fire this event in this case, I'll just check the input activation box. For this simple example, I will set the output activation to 75% of the input activation and fire the trigger when the output goes above 0.5. To access an input or output in code, simply write input or output followed by an underscore, then the name of the input or output without any spaces. So in this case, I will type output underscore activation equals input underscore activation times 0.75. I can press the Save button and see my node in action by dragging the input activation value. Now to make the trigger fire, I will write an if statement. If input activation is greater than or equal to 0.5, output trigger dot trigger. I again save the node and test it by dragging the activation. It works, but it fires the trigger continuously when the input is above 0.5. Maybe I only want the trigger to fire when the value first goes above 0.5. I go back to the declaration section and add a boolean variable called underscore is above and default it to false. As a coding convention, I start this internal variable with an underscore, but you can call it whatever you want. Back on my on change event, I add another if statement inside the one already there. This time I write if is above equals false, then copy and paste my trigger code inside this block. 
I also add a line to set the internal variables. So I write is above equals true. Finally, I add an else block after the original if statement, and inside this I write is above equals false. I save the node and test it again. Now it's working as I want. This isn't a very useful node, just an example of how to create a new node. Most of the built-in nodes can be opened to view their code. Take some time to open up the built-in nodes to see how they are made.